Let's see what we can copy from the Felix Auger Aliassime Return to Serve to help improve your return. Now, this video is courtesy of PTSO on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I've put their link in the description below. So let's watch this whole point, but then we'll focus mainly on the return. So after I do the return here, we'll, uh, we'll check out what Demon R did or didn't do that led to him losing this point. So let, first thing, when you are returning serve, it is critical, and I love this. Look how his elbows are out. See the space? I, I tell my students, you know, let your opponent smell your armpits. Get your elbows out away from your body. It's going to be in your best interest when it comes to turning for a forehand or backhand. So start with your elbows out and keep them out. A lot of players, they let them drop in when they split step. So try to keep your elbows out. So that when you turn, there's space. It helps keep the swing small, helps get the racket face square against the back of the ball. The next idea is look at this pre-movement. Look how, as Demon R serves, you've got this forward movement from Felix. This is critical. So if you want to stand, let's say, here to return serve, start back here. That way you get to go forward to that point. That's exactly what Felix does. Now, he's really far back because this is a first serve. But it doesn't matter how fast your opponent's serve is, you can always move forward into it. Just make sure that you stand far enough back so that forward movement is possible. You want your body weight, if at all possible, to be going forward because you don't want to be pushed around by the shot. Now, let's talk about the split step. And I'm always showing you this. I think it's critical because probably for the first 10 years of my coaching, I taught the wrong thing. So I don't want you to, to be wrong like I was. So when your opponent is striking the ball, you should not be landing your split step. And you can see that with Felix. He's in the air as Demonar is making contact. And the reason is because it takes time for your brain to recognize where the ball's even going. And in fact, it's a very specific time. It's around 0.2 seconds that it takes for your brain to process what it visually, um, it, you know, the information it's visually taking in. So that's why you want to actually delay your split step so that you're landing around 0.2 seconds after your opponent hits the ball. And it's give or take based on the, you know, how fast your brain reacts and all that stuff. But it's basically 0.2. So we can put a timer down. And we can just see how long it takes for Felix to hit the ground. So there you go, 0.21. It's all the same. Now we'll see Felix turn for this ball. So he's, you know, the ball's coming. Watch this. The ball's coming and he hasn't moved yet. He hasn't moved yet. He hasn't moved yet. Why? Because his brain is not processed. Now his brain is processing. And you'll notice it just so happens that it's happening as he's hitting the ground. That is not a coincidence. It doesn't matter if you're at the net, return of serve, serving and volleying, during a rally, it does not matter. Singles, doubles, you want to be in the air as your opponent hits so that you're landing after and specifically around 0.2 seconds. Makes you so much faster in your movement, left, right, out of the way, forward, doesn't matter if you're playing Kyrgios and he does an underhand serve, you can quick run forward faster. So the first movement is this pre, uh, this pre movement forward and then a split step. Now from here, you want to use what is called split turn hit step. And at the end here, maybe I'll, I'll probably put it like right here at the end of the video of this video, I want you to check out a video that I'm going to put right here on the screen. And it is a return of serve video that I made on court where I go through the entire process of split turn hit step and how you can practice it. Uh, on court by yourself with somebody. Um, and so split turn hit step is simply you land your split step, then you're going to turn and you really want to think of the turn as being your backswing. So don't take the racket as far back as you typically do, especially against a very strong serve. Think of the swing as being a little truncated just because of the lack of time. You'll notice though that he's leaning and basically dragging the outside foot, right? So this foot, as he turns, is just dragging. He's not stepping and having this foot land by the time, or before I should say, he hits the ball. He's going to hit the ball, then he's going to step. So watch how he steps with his right foot, but he makes sure it's after contact. That's why it's split, turn, hit, step. This is not random. This is absolutely something you have got to do in order to make sure that you're not late. Because there are a lot of players, I see recreationally, who try to put this foot down and then they're late. Your foot will not get over in time 
if it's a really fast serve. So you might as well just turn and hit and then let the foot hit the ground after. If you are waiting for this foot to hit the ground, if you're right-handed hitting a backhand, that ball is going to go into the side fence because you're going to be so late. So that's a really great way to make sure that you're not late against really fast serves. And the last thing I want to show you is something called the left side of the letter V. So Djokovic does this a lot on his regular backhand. So it's like a letter V right there, right? Let me actually use a different color. That's why it's like a little easier to see. There we go. Acting like it's my first video I've ever made here. Um, so the left side of the letter V, the reason for this is it keeps the wrist position intact. So this angle between the forearm and racket, that angle is the same angle he had right here. And he's not using any wrist. He's just driving and plowing through that ball, keeping that wrist angle intact. There is no wrist as he is hitting this ball. And Djokovic does the same thing on about 70% of the of the backhands, not just the returns. I'm talking about just regular backhands. His racket stays to the left side of his hand. Now, Felix is not going over the shoulder, but you'll see with Djokovic when he does this on his typical backhand, he keeps the racket on the left side of his hands, but then he will drop it down behind his back and the racket will actually touch his back when he's done. And I wasn't planning on doing this, but I thought, yeah, I might as well just show what I'm doing here, uh, what I'm talking about. So by the way, this video is courtesy of 12KGP Tennis on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to their channel. I'm also going to put their link in the description below. So here he is hitting against Chilich, and just look what I'm talking about here, racket to the left of his hand. So it's the left side of the letter V. That is how you get monstrous control, accuracy, consistency, however you want to describe it. Right there, that angle, the angle between his forearm and his racket, that angle is the same angle he had right here. So he's got that angle, then he goes to contact. Now we cannot see that angle from the back view, but we can see the angle in the follow through and the racket stays to the left of his hand. Again, left side of the letter V, it's kind of like a Y with his forearm. And then watch, he goes to his back. Now we don't see that with Felix because Felix is just trying to drive through the ball, not looking to get a lot of topspin. Um, and then he's quickly trying to get back into court. Here, Djokovic is just hitting a cross court ball and he actually really rips it cross court and um, Chilich actually has to hit that ball with slice. But closing the racket face, spinning up and through contact, keeping the racket to the left side of your hand, obviously as a right hand or reverse that if you're a lefty, is something that you can do on almost all backhands. But this really going over the shoulder all the way to the back is very much, um, you know, for the, re no, I'm sorry, not for the return to serve, just more of a regular backhand. Though I will say that Taylor Fritz does this a lot. It's kind of like that Jimmy Connors, Tracy Austin, Chrissy Everett finish where they finish just out like they're handing their racket to the opponent. So it's a really great way to get a ton of consistency. Another thing you'll notice is he hits the ball not to a corner, right? He's not giving um, uh, Alex like a ton of angle. He's just trying to hit the ball more to the center third. So you have to think of your return being more to like the center of the court rather than to the outside. Let's see where this ball lands. Uh, basically right on that line right there. The camera does move. Let me show you one thing that uh, Alex did in this point that got him in trouble because he actually hits a good shot to the corner here. Felix hits a deep backhand, but this right here is where Alex actually lost this point. Watch how Alex, his ball lands right there. In fact, does it land right in that circle? Look at that. I even drew it in the right spot. So the ball lands in that circle, super short. When you hit short, down the line, you are in trouble, especially to your opponent's forehand because he starts moving this way and that's when you see Felix go behind him and that and nice and deep and that gets Alex in a ton of trouble and then he just moves around. The beautiful thing about hitting in inside out or inside in forehand is when you move around your backhand to hit a forehand, it completely freezes your opponent. They don't know if you're going inside out or inside in. They have no idea. Inside out and Alex is sunk. Now, if you'd love to use the same strategies the pros use to win their matches, then you got to pick up the Singles Playbook by Fuzzy Yellow Balls. It's all broken down by the type of opponent you play against, and it's over 50 pages, strategy after strategy, and what's really cool is each page comes with a QR code, so you can watch a video of exactly how to use each strategy. Just use my link in the description and pinned in the first comment. 
And if you're looking for people in your local area to play matches against or practice with, maybe you want to find a league in your area, or you want to find a coach who's close to you who can help you with your game, then use my link for Play Your Court. And it's playyourcourt.com slash two-minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. So check out the video I'm going to put right there and practice your return of serve. Split, turn, hit, step. Go out and practice Film yourself while you're practicing. Film yourself playing matches and review the footage and compare it to what you're learning in these videos. If you do that, there's no doubt. You're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.